Hello there! In this video, I will talk about one of my favorite coloring tools, the Full Blender Pencil by Karen Dash. This pencil is completely colorless and it is made up of uh, the usual binders for coloring pencils, oils and waxes, uh, just without any pigment. It also doesn't have a wooden casing as most colored pencils, so it's just a core all through the pencil which will make it a bit more heavy in your hand. I find them very comfortable to use and to color with. And what this pencil does is that it takes uh, your gradient of one or several colors and it blends it together very nicely. You do not need a special technique or, or anything to use these. You just start to color over your design just as you are when you're filling in something with a colored pencil. I will show you um, an example of a flower design that I have partly used this blender pencil on and is partly just colored with polychromous pencils. So here it is and as you can see uh, the right side is colored with two polychromous pencils and some petals on the left side I have blended with these blender pencils. If you look closely you will see that the unblended petals in this design are quite grainy. I mean it's a nice gradient but you see the grain and the tooth of the paper uh, where the pigment of the pencils are and it's perfectly nice there is no right or wrong in this it's really what you prefer the petals on the left that are blended they are much more shiny waxy and uh, they have a smoother blend without this this graininess and for myself I choose whether or not to use the blender pencil depending on the motive of my design for, for some designs, I find that this grainy gradients are much nicer and for other designs, I prefer this more sleek and shiny blend. Another thing that the blender pencil does is that it puts a protective coat of wax and oil over your design so that you will not smudge it out with your fingers as you, um, as you continue coloring in or later if you touch your page nothing will happen, whereas this bit will be smudged if you, if you uh, smudge it with your hands or fingers. I will show you a couple more pages where I have done um, blending with this blender pencil. The biggest thing I've ever done is actually the page with the many leaves. I'll try and zoom out so you can see. And here you can also see this glossy waxy coat that the blender pencil leaves on the page. So here I actually blended each leaf individually. And you can see the smooth gradients in the designs. One technique that I find particularly useful when blending and, and shading is that if I want a really nice highlight in the middle, I leave the area completely white. And for that to happen, I need to start working from the brightest bit in toward the darker parts of the design. Because if I start working from the darkest part into the light part, there will be a slight transfer of pigment so that this white part will be covered by the pigment carried uh, and picked up by the blender pencil. It will pick up a small amount of pigment that is just enough to to make this white bit a little bit more red or orange or yellow. Which is of course not a disaster. If that is what you're after, then you're free to start from the darker parts of your design. But if you do want to keep this very bright highlight, then I suggest you start from the bright parts and work your way into the darker bit. I have um, another blending tool that is the paper stamp and if you are going to uh, color larger areas with, um, 
with the intention to blend them, then I suggest that you do not use this pencil for blending because it will be a little bit streaky and also you have to apply quite a lot of pressure for a perfect blend. So if you want to co cover a whole page, um, then you will get end up with, uh, with sore hands afterwards. I can show you if you want a large area to blend then I use something called a paper stump and I have a couple you can pick these up at any art store in different sizes and thicknesses I keep one for each color family in each thickness so this is my blue stump and this is my like purple blue stump and I have one for greens and for oranges and when these are sort of used up and really darkly colored, you can actually push them over a um, piece of sandpaper and then you will get a fresh surface. So these will last you forever and they cost almost nothing. So these are the products that I use for larger areas and this pencil is what I use for a more detailed area. And as you can see, they're perfectly uh, they sharpen to a perfectly nice point. Of course, my camera won't focus, so you cannot really see. Um, but if you do put these into your pencil sharpener, I suggest that you keep a sharpener for these only because they will leave a residue of wax and oil in the sharpener. And if you use your regular curl pencil in the same sharpener, then it might not work perfectly, so you might not get the really fine point that you're after in your colored pencil. I will show you one design where I have used um, these two blending techniques together. This is a different book and here I have used actually um, the paper stamp for the background and the blender pencils for the flowers and the other designs. And you can actually see here how the um, uh, braid and the flowers and the leaves are shiny whereas the background is more matte and you can also see that um, the flowers have more of a silky uh, sort of blend and the background has more of a smoky blend and of course um, the blender pencil is gives the more shiny blend and then this more matte smoky blend comes from the blending stumps or paper stumps. So it's all blended. There we go. I have also prepared um, a small demonstration for blending. I have start. I've just started out the page with the bugs in Secret Garden. It's a bit intimidating. I think it will be even more intricate than the page with them in the leaves. Um, here, I already started on a few bugs. Um, these are already blended. You can see the waxy coat and the really smooth blend. And this purple bug is not yet blended because I just prepared it for this for this video. So you can see the graininess in the gradient here, uh, as opposed to no grain on this bug. So let's see what happens if I color it in. As a left-hander, of course, my hand casts a shadow over the design but you will see in just just a minute and here I have plenty of white space here in between so I can uh, start from the dark part and work my way into the light bits because I know that my highlight will not disappear altogether but you will see that the pigment does carry from the dark to the light. There you go. And 
it does crumble a bit. There you are. Okay. So I have gotten rid of all the graininess and made a quite smooth gradient here. And you can see that I also uh, have a little bit brighter colors. So the blender pencil, this one in particular, sort of activates the colors a little bit so that they are a little bit more vibrant, which is, I think, really, really nice. We can do one more, which is just one color. This purple bug was actually two, two colored polychromos, and I will give my pencil a little bit of a twist in the pencil sharpener so it's nice and sharp again. Out of focus. Never mind. And then just pull the color down toward the highlighted bit. And as you can see, I'm not particularly following any lines or details. I'm just coloring in the whole wing and it will spread the pigment really nicely and blend it out for me. There you go. And there's a nice little gradient that I can... And you can actually go back in with a different pencil after, after you blend it and add a little bit more color if you like or a completely different color and then blend it all again. So you can layer it it will not be perfect, but you can if you feel that you want to go back in and add some different colors. So that is a demonstration of the Caran d'Ache full blender pencil and a small comparison with the uh, paper blender stump. I hope you like it and uh, happy coloring!